What's up everybody, it's your man, I do a barber, and today we're doing a detachable blade only fade on this haircut right here. We're doing a mid-ball fade, one and a half with the grain on top. First I'll start with the 5-0 blade to create my first guideline. And as you can see, I'm just going around the head, creating this guideline. Typically, I won't go all the way around the head like this, but this is a very easy way of creating a guideline. As you can see, guideline is, is straight, it's symmetrical, and all, now all I have to do is clean up underneath. And this is very simple to bald out. This is very simple. You just clean up everything underneath that guideline that you just created. And I'm gonna use the same steps as I did in my previous video where I had a Hispanic uh, model. Today, my model is black. So, like I always say, when you have systems of fading, all of your steps should remain the same. Nothing should change in your steps. You should try and do that to create consistency. If you saw my video on the different phase systems, I have many different phase systems that I use to complete a phase. But this detachable blade system is very easy. As you saw, I did it in that video. It happens very fast. And one thing I like about the blades is it happens really quick. The action of the fade, it happens very fast compared to fading with guards. As you can see, that is complete. Now I will move on to removing the hair on top with the one and a half with the grain. Now this step is very simple. As you can see, my client, he doesn't have any cowlicks. I've cut his hair before, so there's really no worries. I can just go in with this one and a half blade with the grain, removing the hair on top. This is very simple. You just go with the grain, keeping the same pressure on the blade throughout each stroke, keeping the, keeping the blade flat, not changing the angle because if I cut his hair with the blade angled like this, as you can see, that cuts at a longer length and you're not gonna cut anything and you're not gonna get a consistent length on top. So I'm just going with the grain and of course be careful in the cowlick area because there are whorls back here and you don't wanna cut in the wrong direction. This part here is very simple. Now that is complete, I can go on to create my guidelines and start to fade out my guidelines. First, I'm gonna go in with the OA blade and we're gonna create a one inch guideline here. This is very easy. As you can see there, very easy. The one thing I like about blades is the action happens very fast and you can put in guidelines very quickly uh, rather than using guards because a lot of times with guards you have to go over the area a lot so if you remember what we did in the previous video with the hispanic client i'm using my triple zero to remove this line i will probably have to go back with the five zero to remove this line but this triple zero one side is higher than the other so i'm going to start off with the side that's a little bit lower to start to lighten this line that I created with the 5-0. So I'm going to start back here 
and I'm just coming in using the corners. And I'm going up into this area pretty high because the triple zero fades right into the OA. You have to use a lot of the corners and be very cautious with it as you do it. You need to use a lot of the corners. As you can see, I'm cutting and combing. And if you're curious, my blades are zero gap, so they do cut, cut a little closer than blades normally would. But as you can see, that line is, is slowly fading away. You can see it's very faint now. And the only thing that I'll do to remove that line is I will use the other corner of my blade that is a lot closer to remove this line. So as you see, that line's pretty faint there. I'm gonna come back now using this side of the blade to remove this line that's left. Because as I turn him, you can see the line that I didn't fade out there in the back of his head versus this area here where I just used the corners. So you see there's not much work that needs to be done in this area because I prepped myself for using this. So now it's time to remove this line completely. Like I say, on occasions I will have to come back with the 5-0, but if you come in, and this is why it's important to not leave such harsh lines, not to leave such a defined guideline because you will have to do extra work in the end. It's like the classic saying goes, what you put something in with, you take it out with that as well. So as you see, that guideline there is done. And that was pretty easy. I'm going to go in now and create another guideline here with my one and a half blade, as you can see there. And I'm going up into his parietal ridge, as you can see there. Although I did go one and a half with the grain on top, I will be using a two blade to connect this bulk here at the parietal ridge. So I'll go against the grain with the two here to connect this longer lens to this fade length, if you all are curious. So now that that line is, has been put in, I will come in with, with my 1A to lighten this, this line here. Now, as I go in with this blade, I'm using the entire blade. So just be mindful of that. The 1A is very forgiving. It cuts very soft, it's very, it's not as sharp as once you get down below the 1A. Every blade below the 1A is very sharp and the action happens very fast. So, which means you need to be very careful using blades like the 1, the OA, the triple zero, four zero, five zero, outliner blade. Those blades are very sharp once you get to those lengths. So as you see here, that line is a lot softer as it was before. So as I turned his head, you can see that guideline that was left here. You can see this guideline here. Obviously you see the five zero and the OA line that was left. You see how dark that is now compared to this. So now what I will do is put on my one blade and I'm gonna use the corners a lot because like I say, the blades below the 1A are very sharp. So I can't go in with the one using the entire blade. I'm gonna proceed with caution and use the corners to start off. I'm gonna come in with the corners to start off. I don't wanna go too crazy. You just wanna do one pass you don't want to focus on one area too much at this moment because right now you're just setting in the fade. You're not doing anything too crazy. I'm just setting in my fade. That's all that I want to do right now. I just want to set in the fade. That's my objective, set in the fade. 
once I set in the fade, then I can start detailing. That's where a lot of people have problems with is they focus on one area too much, maybe trying to complete the fade to perfection as they do the entire fade. But if you just put in your fade, then you can come back in detail, then you're finished. So as you see there, that fade is looking pretty good. What I will do is I'll come back through here and I'll do a little bit of polishing. But before that, I'm going to put on, like I said, with this area at the parietal ridge to connect the fade to the, to the one and a half with the grain, I'm going to use this two blade here. And I'm just going to go against the grain. You'll see this line of demarcation lighten a lot. So just pay attention to that. Do you see that? You see how that line of demarcation is practically gone now. I will come back with the one and a half, primarily using the corners because like I say, what you put something in with is, if you're having a problem, if you see a line or something that you're trying to attack, remember and go back to whatever you put it in with, which is the one and a half. So I'm just gonna use the one and a half using the corners here to just tap at some of these little dark areas. And that happens sometimes. You just got a few areas and you just gotta attack them. It's that easy, it's very simple. Boom. See how easy that is, guys? Very easy. It's time to do a little bit of detail. So I'm gonna come in with my 1A using the corners to attack any light spots that I see here. And this part is very simple. I'm just coming in using the corners because all of the work is done at this point. What we don't want to do is mess up what we just created. And this is where a lot of people mess up in barbering. They'll have a fade in here and they'll come to detail the fade and then they'll mess something up. They'll mess the fade up by coming in here and over detailing. As you can see, that fade looks pretty good. I'm gonna come back finally. I'm gonna, just right here, I'm gonna use the corners of my one blade. Just tap there, boom, boom, boom. And as you saw, I didn't have to go back with my five zero to take this line out. The triple zero did it. I didn't have to go back with the OA to take that OA line out. The one did it. And the reason that is, is because my blades are set up in order to fade perfectly into one another. If you go watch my video on how to set up your tools properly, you will see what I mean by everything fading into one another. I didn't have to go back, which is a good thing, but that doesn't happen in all cases. In this case it does, and that is because my tools are set up properly. So what I like to do with edge ups, this is what I like to do. I like to start with the vertical bars first on both sides, then do the front lining. So what I'll do is this, I'll come in here, And I'll put that line in just like that. But before I move on, what I like to do, before I do the other vertical bar is, I like to cut off this portion of the line. So let me give you guys a baseline of what we're looking like on his edge up. So as you see, that's his edge up. We gotta square that off. I've done his vertical bars as you can see, but I'm gonna take off this little portion. What some, what some barbers do is they start in the middle and work their way out. Me personally, I don't like to start like this. I like to start just like this, where I've got that little portion done. And now I can go to the other side, as you can see, this side is done. And then I'll move on to the other side As you can see, doing his vertical bars. And one thing you want to do, if there's hair here at this vertical bars, you want to comb the hair to the hairline. See how that those few hairs there overlap? Once you comb the hair over, you can cut those hairs off and they can no longer be in your way when you 
do the edge up because what will happen is if you don't if you just take this to the edge up and just edge up like this where you just bring in the trimmer to the edge you have these hairs that hang over and it looks really nasty because it grows out really fast especially once they take a shower or if they're doing anything and it just doesn't look good so now that that's done i'm going to do this little portion here so i'm setting myself up here And sometimes you get little pesky hairs that like to run away from you. This is why I like to comb the hair to the hairline. Me personally, I don't like using spritz and I'll explain why. Spritz is going to hold the hair in place to get you a good edge up. This is true. Uh oh. You got a cold chill. Is that a cold chill? Yeah. <laughs> he just got a cold chill. Luckily, I caught it before I messed up his edge up. But the one reason I don't like using spritz is because it's almost like a false sense of security. Because what's going to happen is if you use spritz and just holds his hairline in place, what happens when the spritz is gone? What's going to happen when the spritz is gone is you're going to be left with his natural edge up, which means once the spritz is gone, his hair might go every which way. I like to naturally edge people up and prep the hairline first because that will give you a natural, really clean edge up. If you can edge someone up naturally and move their hairline and then move it back into place, that's a good edge up. And I'm gonna show you that here in a second. So as you can see, I got these two points here, as you can see, all I've gotta do is just match this to this. And some occasions, one side may be higher than the other. All you have to do is just adjust it slightly because not everyone's edge up is straight across. But this is how I do edge ups a lot of the times, guys. On kids, it's a little different because I can stand above a kid and go and work my way from the center working out. But with adults, they're taller, they're bigger. Sometimes the chairs don't go up as high. I like to do the vertical bar and this little section on the corners and then I'll clean up the middle. So now all I have to do is just clean up the middle. It's very simple. I'm just cleaning up these little long hairs here. And there you go. See, nice clean edge up. Now what we're gonna do just to show you guys what I mean by this is you can mess up his edge up, right? So like if I had spritz and I just did this, it wouldn't be good because it might overlap. You might hair, have hairs that go crazy if you didn't prep the edge up. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna comb his hair back into place because this is what's gonna happen when he comes home. He's gonna go take a shower. He's gonna go do whatever. Maybe he goes and works out. Maybe he puts a hat on or something. And you see, look, his edge up looks the same as it did when I just finished it versus if I would have just used spritz and did it and didn't prep the hairline first, it would have, his hair may come, come back to a more unnatural state. So as you see, very, very simple. This is how I do edge ups, guys. I know people were asking me to do a tutorial on how to edge people up. I didn't want to do one because I felt that it's a, really easy video and people have other barbers have made videos like this on YouTube so I didn't want to just make another edge up video but I figure I would add these little tips and these little nuggets within this tutorial to help you guys on doing edge ups so this is the fade guys I hope you guys liked it detachable blade only fade uh, using only the detachables on a black person this time. So you can, as you can see, using using it on straight hair or over curly hair, it's a very easy system. Just if you follow the steps and stick to the system that you use, you can see that the results can come out quite good. You probably have seen some people use detachable blades and fades, but they actually come back and clean up with the adjustables. But I use with the blades only. And there's a cut guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys found this helpful. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe and press that notification bell. And one other thing I tell everyone is browse the channel. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below about this tutorial. If you have any questions about detachable blades, but like I say, browse the channel. I have plenty of 
content when it comes to detachable blades i have understanding detachable blades i have another tutorial about detachable blades which is linked below so this has been your man i do it barber i'm gonna get out of here and if you like any of the products you saw in this video i'll throw links to those in the description below i'll holler